All right, today we're going to convert these RBL lights from Home Depot um, to take pixels and able to uh, be controlled with X lights. So, first thing first, you got to get an RBL, a real big light from Home Depot. And we're going to take off the top here, it just unscrews to the left here. On the inside, this is what you see. This is the guts of it. They have uh, six LEDs that are battery operated. Uh, we don't want to use those. Step one, we want to go ahead and unscrew uh, both sides. They loosen up this pretty, pretty good so we can pull this center part out. It's glued in. Once when you get the center part pulled out, it comes loose. Go ahead and just drop it into the bottom down there. It's going to give you space later for what we need to do. I just grabbed a half inch piece of tape and put it on the bottom here so that I can get good spacing for my punch to drill my new holes with. So here's a punch I got from Harbor Freight. We're going to drill two half inch holes at the base down here. I'm using a half inch step bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to put PG sevens in there. All my stuff is ran off of Raywoo um, connections. So I went ahead and grabbed a couple of cables here. Uh, they're both going to be a flat Raywoo. I also grabbed an extra cable. It's a Belden 9451. Um, you can find that at any big box stores. And I got some of this 18 gauge heat shrink tubing. Now when it stripped everything back, I twist the ends and then I slide the tubing over the twisted ends. On this heat shrinkable tubing, there is a flared end and a not flared end. So one end of the opening is bigger than the other. I go ahead and put the smaller opening um, towards the connector side and I leave the flared end to the other side so it's easier to slide over those twists and those wires. I'm using a five volt seed pixels for my conversion. Um, this has the 18 gauge wire on it. I use my flesh cuts and I go ahead and I, I seed them down just a little bit and then I wiggle on them so they, the flesh cuts get in between the wires and actually cut the, 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 uh, the wires apart. It's a little bit easier. With the wiring chart on the first one here, this is just a basically a data return. I don't use that one. I'm gonna go ahead and snip that off. I'm going to go ahead and strip the rest of the wires back. On the right of my table there, you can kind of see on a piece of tape the wiring for it, the ground data, and the voltage plus, and the return wire. Once again, I use these heat shrink tubings, twist the wire, use the flared end to slide up and over the top of it, get my heat gun prepped and ready, and go ahead and shrink those on. They work great. I've tried to solder it the old-fashioned way. Um, I'm sure it's better. I'm sure it lasts longer, but for me, this is what works. It's quicker and I haven't had anything fail yet. With my pixel control over here, I got it from a company called Bong69. Um, I'll leave a link in the description down there. I went ahead and set it up in WLED so it can only show me 42 lights. Um, so I don't have to sit there and count my pixels. So as soon as I plug it in, a, it checks and makes sure that my connections are correct. And B, it shows me where my 42 lights end. And so I go to the end there, turn it off, and go ahead and cut that pixel out. So now I've got my 42 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and solder in the female side of it now. Same thing, I twist those ends together. Put that heat shrink tubing over the top of it. And it works wonderfully. Okay, so here's those holes we drilled earlier, the PG-7, the half inch holes. I'm gonna take our PG-7 here, and I'm gonna go ahead and thread that on to the base. Now, the reason we left that centerpiece out is so you can get your arm all the way to the base of these RBLs. So I'm just going ahead and prepping it here. Got one arm stuck inside the light here. I'm gonna go ahead and thread it on the back here. Okay, now once we have it threaded, I'm going to go ahead and run everything that we've soldered together through this connection. So 
the part I'm holding now is going to be the female end. So we're going to run everything, lights, connectors, everything's going to go all the way through this end. So there's my male end hanging out there. I'm going to go ahead and strip the other side here and I'm going to go ahead and attach the female end. Once again, I take my Belden 9451 and I twist those wires together. Make sure the flared ends are on the top. Slide my flared ends over the cable and we're going to go ahead and heat shrink those down. I like to really try to make them perfect because once when you solder them, um, uh, they obviously they stay until you cut them apart. But it just gets in a good habit of making it perfect like that. Can we slide everything in there and make sure my ends are about equal length apart? Tighten up my PG7s. And now comes the fun part. I 3D printed this top here uh, that we're going to attach all the pixels to. It takes 42 pixels for what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and number my number one pixel here is on the right and my number 42 pixels is on the top left up there. So when I go in and I wire them, I want to order, I want to wire them in order. I sped up about 25 minutes worth of wiring here. Go ahead and drop that into the bottom of the bucket there. We're going to go in and reach in and grab that piece that we took out the first time. Obviously, I left everything attached, so if I ever wanted to go back to the battery operated, I can. So I didn't cut any wires, but uh, I probably never will. So again, we're going to reset that back in there into its little slots. Once when you got your slots back in there and put together, we're going to go ahead and screw everything tight back together. Now we've got all screwed back together, it's time to attach our pixel conversion right onto that piece with a couple of zip ties. trimmed up the zip ties. I'm going to plug it into my pixel controller. Make sure we work. And there it is. We all lit up. So now I'm a big fan of labeling everything and making sure that it doesn't get crossed over to any other voltage. So everything I have that's five volts is all yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and label this with five volts. I'm also going to label the bottom of it of how many pixels I have, the voltage and the counts and my color order. So if I ever uh, go down the road and I need to reprogram it, I have all the info for it. Last thing is put the bulb back on the top. 